Hi everyone, Mitch Jackson. Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be fun. I'm going to be sharing with you the one thing that I think all new lawyers, lawyers that have just passed the bar, lawyers that are out those first couple of years, maybe even lawyers transitioning sideways from one type of practice to another type of practice, a new firm that they're trying to, you know, build their niche, right? Build their personal brand, try to stand out above all the noise in the legal profession in your firm um, to help expedite the success curve, uh, shorten the success curve uh, in their firm with their efforts. And uh, I think this is going to be good, you guys. So listen, we all want to be liked. We all want to be noticed. We want our work product to be, to be praised. We want our clients to pay attention to who we are. We want the senior partners to know the amount of time and effort we're putting into our practice, but they don't teach you how to do that in law school, right? They don't teach that. When you get out of law school, you pass the bar, they start handling handling you files and they ask you, you know what? Get it done. And they don't teach you this one thing that I think is going to be critical to expediting your career. It's going to be critical to becoming top of mind when it comes to clients, potential clients, lawyers across town, and other partners and associates in your firm. Now, before we dive in, this is going to be a quick live video, you guys, 15, 20 minutes. I don't want to waste your time unless we get a lot of questions. But I want to know where you're watching from in the comments, whether you're over on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. Let me know in the comments, where are you? What state are you in? What type of law do you practice? Just let me know. And when you comment, it'll pop up on my screen. I can look at the comments. I can look at the questions. And uh, we've got a friend of ours over from the UK, Police Officer Neil. Neil, it's good to see you. You guys, come on in. Let me know where you are and uh, also ask your questions. Hit the comment button wherever you're watching this from and ask your questions uh, revolving around what we're about to talk about today. At the end of today's show, I will be giving away a free PDF version of my book, The Ultimate Guide to Social Media. Let me see if I can bring that up quickly. Boom, this bad boy right here. The Ultimate Guide to Social Media for Business Owners, Professionals, and Entrepreneurs. It's going to be touching upon some of the communication techniques I'll be discussing during today's uh, broadcast. So please, you guys, stick around. And if you want a free copy of the book, uh, I will let you know exactly how to get that copy just for you. Um, also, today's show is being brought to you by Top Secret Partner, topsecretpartner.com. You guys, this is my consulting service for new lawyers to help them do some of the things that we're going to be talking about today during the live video and some of the questions that I'm, I'm going to be answering for you. Go to Top Secret Partner for more information. All right. So let's dive into to today's show. Uh, first of all, you guys, 34 years of practicing law, started my practice off day one, back in my car, playing basketball down at Laguna Beach. The things I'll be sharing with you and the resources and books I'll be sharing with you during today's broadcast, they're valuable. They work. I think you're going to want to put them into action. I'm speaking from experience, you guys. Uh, Steve from Scotland, it's good to see you. I hope you enjoy the book, big guy. Uh, it's always good. You guys follow Steve from Scotland. And one of my favorite places, by the way, been there a couple of times. We've had a good time. Um, but here's the thing. Once you get out and start practicing, all else being equal, your understanding of the law, civil procedure, the evidence code, local rules of court, right? All of that being equal. What I've noticed that successful lawyers do, especially lawyers better than anyone else. And this is something I've capped into you guys back in my first year of practicing law and it's changed everything. And that is we focus on building relationships. I'm not going to use that boring term networking, but we focus on building genuine relationships. And there are some ways you can do that. It's super easy, especially, look, lawyers, you guys are the smartest people that I've ever come across in my life. I'm a first generation lawyer. I did not grow around, grow up around lawyers. But I'll tell you guys, once I run through this list with you, you the light bulb's going to go on if you're not already doing these things. And it's going to help expedite your career. It's going to help you get better clients. It's going to help you... Uh, be in a more favorable light with the partners that you're working with, you know, the guys and gals that make the hiring decisions, the salary increase decisions, the assignment of cases decisions. All of these things are what we talk about uh, every day over at topsecretpartner.com. And so I hope you find this stuff interesting. Um, look, here's the thing. By building relationships, 
you are increasing your value. You're becoming more likable. People are going to want to be around you if people are going to want to work with you. They're going to respect respect you for how you handle yourself. They're going to be respecting you for the value you bring to a case. And they're also going to respect you for time you're spending with someone else. And there are all types of ways of doing this. One of the seven or eight best ways that I'll be discussing that I want to start off with with you is to understand the concept. And I'm going to share some books with you that have changed my life on these very topics, okay? At the end of the broadcast, uh, the first thing is when you are on social and digital, when you're having a conversation with somebody else, remember to use their name. Remember to use their handle on social media, at Mitch Jackson, for example, whatever their tag or handle is, remember to include that in the conversation. Um, there we go. We've got a work comp attorney that's popped in. Thanks for sharing. I invited everyone. Let me know where you are, what type of law you practice, and I'll share it with the, you know, I'll share it with my audience, both live and recorded. By the way, you guys, this is live. Hit the share button and share this out. If you're watching the recorded version of the show, hit the share button and share this out with other lawyers that you think this might add value to. And I will be sharing resource links at the end of the show, you guys. All right, first thing, use, use first names, okay? When you're having conversations with other attorneys in your office, with partners in your office, with clients, uh, with co-counsel, with other attorneys in court, make, it, make a mental note to incorporate their name into the conversation. When you're asking them a question, of, instead of saying, hey, can you hand me that yellow pad on your side of the counsel table? Hey, Mitch, can you do me a favor? Can you slide that pad over my direction? You're asking for the same thing, but you're personalizing it by using a name. That one little simple trick, oral conversations, when you're writing an email or a letter, when you're talking about somebody else, you know something good that they've done by including names, that right there is something that's going to help you stand out. Another interesting trick that someone taught me because I was really bad at this, and it's hard for me not to do this when I'm talking to you right now on live video, but you're gonna see what I'm talking about, is force yourself, okay, check yourself before you wreck yourself to stop using the word I and to stop using the word me during your conversations. When you're waiting for your case to be called, you're out in the hallway at the courthouse having a casual conversation back in the day when we used to do that, right? Now on Zoom, uh, when you're having a conversation with someone, when you're in the law firm and you're talking to a partner, when you're talking to a client, client, client that yes, who may or may not like you, just like the climate changes, just like that, right? Avoid using I, avoid talking about yourself, okay? Always do your best from your heart and show a genuine interest in the other person. You guys, this is key. I'm around a lot of first year lawyers, a lot of first lawyers, one to five years. And what I noticed is there's so much going on in their lives. They want to talk about it. And that's cool. I get it. I'm as excited about what they're doing as they are. I'm more excited about it because I love this stuff. 34 years and I still love this stuff. So I must be doing something right, right? But what they end up doing is instead of asking me how I'm doing or for help on something or for feedback on the personality of a particular judge, they talk about themselves and it, and it doesn't stop. And it's an excitement type of thing. It's all new for them. I get it, you guys. But here's the trick. If you focus the conversation back to the other person, and an easy way of doing this is avoid using the word I. This is what I like to do. This is the way I would have done it. This is what I did this weekend. This is the way I handled oral argument on this motion. This is the way I give us opening statement instead, or, you know, that didn't work for me. That's not, that's not my way of doing things. You're focusing the conversation back on yourself instead of the other side. So turn this around and ask the other side, how would you have done that? What did you think about that hearing? What were your thoughts about the initial draft of that pleading? You're talking to a senior partner. What did you do this weekend? Why did you decide to approach this issue with that fact pattern and that particular case law? I'm telling you guys by, by in good faith, once again, from a meaningful intent from the heart, circling the conversation back to the other side, and then number three, spend 70% of your time listening and 30% of your time talking. It's going to change everything, especially when it comes to creating trust, rapport, likability, 
and uh, building new relationships, okay? Just with those steps. If you do that with a smile on your face, if you learn how to give a big, beautiful smile, show your crow's, your crow's feet, right? And just let that smile come out while you're having these conversations, people are going to really um, start connecting with you at a whole nother level. I know this seems basic, but think about it for a second. Take a step back. Most young lawyers aren't doing this. You don't learn this in law school. You don't learn this in trial advocacy, in moot court, right? This is something that I think, and I'll share a book with you that kind of changed my life in just a couple of minutes on how to do all of this and more. In fact, two books um, where it changed everything with me getting along with opposing counsel, with having opposing counsel because they like you and they trust you. Um, and people like to do business with who they know, like, and trust, referring new cases to my firm. That's a beautiful thing, right? With watching advancement opportunities increase because a partner likes you, they trust you, they know that if they put you as the face of the firm in front of a client, you're going to be doing the things that we're talking about. Maria, thank you. I'm monitoring uh, incoming questions and comments, you guys. Maria, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the new book. Maria is the recipient of the new book. And um, the other thing you can do is ask open-ended questions. So when you're having these conversations with the other side, you're listening more than you're speaking. You're not using the words I or me in your sentences. That's the tough part, but it's also an easy way to check yourself. You know, use phrases and open-ended questions that steer the conversation back to the other side. You know, tell me more. What did you mean by that? Um, how did that make you feel? Questions that can't be answered with a yes or no, but continues the dialogue. I think this is critically important, you guys. All right, that's the first thing. Just basic conversation focused on the other, inviting the other to share. And I'll tell you right now, there's a there's actually a scientific human factors aspect be behind all of this that's gone into much more detail in the books I'm going to share in the next couple of minutes. And that is people like to hear their name. People like to talk about themselves. They like to be invited to talk about themselves. And if you ask the right questions, if you send the right written or oral invitation to allow someone else to talk about themselves, they're going to feel good about the conversation. And you know what? You're going to learn more about that other person uh, to not only help strengthen the relationship, but to help take you down that next year, 10 years or 20 years with opposing counsel or with that partner. And that's the next thing I want to talk about is keep track of everything I just said. When you have conversations with partners, when you're you have a new lawyer assigned to a file, opposing counsel, go ahead and use a platform like Nimble, N-I-M-B-L-E. If I put your name in Nimble, it will bring up all of your social media platforms, everything that you're talking about into one easy to read screen. We use Nimble when we're picking a jury, when we used to pick juries, right, before Zoom. And we put the jurors' names in Nimble and it brings up, you know, are they talking about their kids' cross-country meet? Are they talking about something, uh, stressful at business? Are they talking about a trip they just got back from on social media? It brings in your Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram feeds all into one place. So you can really almost instantly check somebody out. I use Nimble for opposing counsel before I make a call to a claims adjuster um, for all types of reasons like this from a professional standpoint. But what it allows you to do is see exactly what the interest of that person is so that when you have this conversation with them, when you send them that email, you can tactfully and when appropriate, incorporate some of that information into the conversation. Obviously, you don't want to come across a talker, but if they bring up um, something about their kids on social media and you're 15 minutes late on a phone call, returning their call, because you just got back from your kid's track meet, you know, you might want to bring that up. And I guarantee you, they're going to say, you know what, my son, my son's track also. She also ran cross country. I don't know how they do it. And then the conversation starts, okay? By using a database, and like I said, Nimble works really well for doing this background check. You can use Google, or you can just keep track of the information you acquired during a conversation. Put it in your database. Put down, instead of just name, phone number, address, uh, social media sites, put down and open up some new fields. Uh, spouse's name, kid's name, birthdays, anniversary, where do they go to college? Uh, what do they enjoy doing? What are their hobbies, their interests and passions? 
set up five or 10 different databases or just one note section where you can keep track of this stuff. And by doing that, before you then see that attorney in court or before you walk into that partner's office, before you send that email, six months later, you can check your database, see what it was you were talking about. Little Johnny was getting ready for the state championships in high school soccer. And so when you circle back six months later, you can say, listen, Judy, before we get started, I understand, you know, Johnny was playing in the state championships for Danny Hills High School. How did that go? And then just let her answer the question, and then you can start the conversation and then roll back over into the legal reason, the case necessities as to why you're calling. But I think by keeping track of all of this stuff in a database, it's a great place to, um, to stay organized and add some foundation to the relationship that, that you're going to be building for the rest of your career. We did this back on day one, you guys. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, so a friend of mine who has Nimble had a software company back in the day called Goldmine. He's the guy that co-founded it and started it. And I remember using Goldmine and a couple of other products to keep track and do everything we're talking about. Uh, today, we use Nimble. Today, we use Clio, which is a cloud-based service, whether I'm on my phone, tablet, I'm out of the I always have access to all this information. So that's my little secret. Um, then what you want to do, and I'm going to be wrapping this up in about three or four minutes. So if you have questions, and once again, I'll be giving away a copy of my free copies of my free book for those of you that are still around or watching the recorded version of the show. What you want to do is every four months or so, set a to do, a reminder in your database to reach out to this person, right? Just to reach out and once again, checking Nimble, finding out what's going on in their life, or maybe you're following one of their cases on the news. Maybe you've heard some good news through some mutual friends. Reach out, just wanted to say hi, see how you guys are doing, see how you're doing, and let you know how, and ask that go. How did that case work out? Or how did uh, your paddleboard trip down to Mexico go? Right, you just continue the conversation. I think by using a database and tickling a uh, follow-up every three to four months, whether it's opposing counsel, whether it's a client, whether it's a, pot a potential client, that's a great way to keep the digital dance going. I use BombBomb Bomb to do this via email. BombBomb is a service that allows you to send inbox emails, where if I sent you an email, a video BombBomb Bomb email, that's B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B, all of these services you guys are available over at streaming.lawyer slash brands, streaming.lawyer slash brands. In fact, let me bring that up. If you guys go to streaming.lawyer slash brands, you can see most of the products that I'm using and that I recommend. Some of them I'm a brand ambassador for. Some I pay full full price for. It just depends on the product. But check it out. So I'll send a bonbon. Bon. Um, it saves me time. I don't have to leave a long message if they're not available. But I'll send a video email. How are you doing? Just wanted to follow up. By the way, how's Johnny's cross-country team doing? When you get a chance, get back to me. I want to talk to you about some discovery responses that I think we still need to put a little bit more time in, right? You can use BombBomb Bomb to kind of stand out, do the things that I'm doing because there's something about video. There's something about looking people in the, in the digital eyeballs that really makes a difference. And I think BombBomb's Bomb's made a difference uh, for for me and other members of my firm. I told you I was gonna share a couple of resources with you. Um, I am going to do that once again. If you're still here, if you're watching the recorded show and you want a PDF copy of my book, a free version of my book, The Ultimate Guide to Social Media, which by the way, in the third section of the book has communication tips from some of the best experts on the planet. You can use these in court, you can use these to close a traditional sale, or you can use these communication tips to build your brand on social media. I've got people like Carmine Gallo who wrote the book, Talk Like Ted. He interviewed 200 top TED speakers and, and figured out what makes them so good during their TED talk. And Carmine was nice enough to contribute a chapter to the book on how you can use these same approaches and principles to effectively communicate in your opening statement, in a mediation or arbitration or on social media. So what I want you to do, if you want a copy of the book, send me an email to Mitch, M-I-T-C-H, at jacksonwilson.com. That's Mitch at jacksonwilson.com. And I'll make sure I send you a link where you can download a free uh, PDF version of the book. If you like and prefer a Kindle version, an Audible version, which is kind of my favorite. I like the Audible. I had a professional voice actor do the book. He was fantastic. Rich Miller 
follow him on Twitter, um, or a traditional paperback version of the book. It's all available at Amazon. Just go to Mitch Jackson on Amazon. All right, so here's one of my secret weapons. This book was written back in the 1930s. I think it was 37. It's a game changer, you guys. This book right here is a game changer. How to win friends and influence people. Everything that I've read in this has helped me win multi-million dollar jury verdicts for my clients over the last 34 years. They've helped me bring in cases. Every law firm in town was trying to land and using some of the principles in, in Dale Carnegie's book helped me bring those cases into the law firm. His techniques absolutely with media and with digital, with this type of content, with written blog posts, with Audible uh, podcast, what Carnegie teaches in this, you know, landmark book works better today than ever before. So definitely check that out. And this is some guys that's just been a game changer for me. Also, Bob Berg, who's a dear friend of mine, wrote the book Adversaries into Allies. If you, if Bob Berg, if that name rings a bell, it's because he's the author, the co-author of the Go Giver series of books. Brilliant writer, brilliant speaker, gifted speaker. And of all the books, this is my favorite. When I'm asked to be a young trial lawyer, for everyone coming into topsecretpartner.com, which is my new consulting service for new lawyers who have passed the bar and, and, and they want to jumpstart their legal careers, they need someone where they can e text a question to and get an immediate response, right? Get them focused on the important things. Um, I'm not going to do any of that until they first read the book, Adversaries into Allies. It's people skills. It's how to um, have conversations with people, how to respectfully disagree with others. It's how to be tough on issues and kind to people. And I think for the lawyers and trial lawyers out there, every single page of this book, and Bob shares just a lot of family stories, some life lessons that he learned from his dad in this book. Everything in this book you can use to be a better lawyer, business owner, and human being. And when you're all three of those things, you can have a successful career in the practice of law. And uh, you can advance a little bit more quickly up the leadership ladder and up the partnership ladder at some of the big firms. Uh, what I want to do is let me go ahead and answer a couple of questions here, share a couple of comments. Yeah, Bob Berg is a great person on your list. That's good to hear, Maria. Yeah, he's he's incredible and is doing a lot of good things. Um, real quick, I'm looking at questions from Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, LinkedIn, and a few other places. And um, yeah, so the, my favorite resource, you guys, what's my favorite resource if I had to go to like one single go-to resource. I think what I do is I'd recommend uh, Bob's book, okay, and really spend some time digesting it, highlighting it, putting his approaches into practice. And I'd also, honestly, you guys, I would become a part of the Top Secret Partner Consulting, topsecretpartner.com, where instead of spending hours trying to figure out how to deal with emotion or what to say during a phone call or how to handle a particular issue in a deposition, I'm a text or email away, boom. Chances are I've dealt with the same issue you're dealing with right now a um, hundred times in the past. That's been my experience with new lawyers. I can usually answer something in 60 to 120 seconds and we're done and you're happy. So check that out too if it's something that you think might help expedite your career. Um, great stocking stuffers, right? For the holidays, the book, boom, great stocking stuffer. And uh, the uh, top secret partner is too. All right, you guys, listen, for the rest of you, I actually do have to bolt at uh, 30 minutes after the hour. So I wanted to make this quick, but I'll try to get back and answer your questions. Reach out to me if you guys have any questions. Go to streaming.lawyer, go to topsecretpartner.com and use the contact box to reach out to me. Um, if you're an attorney that's looking to build out his or her brand, on social media, I invite you to check out my Legal Minds Mastermind at LegalMinds.Lawyer. We've got lawyers from around the world that are part of this community who are using how to, who are learning how to use digital to build their brands and connect with referral sources from all around the world. It's it's just a great mastermind that I'm really enjoying. And uh, I think between now and the next time we speak, you guys, I want you to take care. It's tough out there right now. I get it. You know, do your best to enjoy the journey and never forget to try to make each day 
your masterpiece. Thanks for stopping by, recorded viewers. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching the recorded show. And between now and next time, take care and make it a masterpiece. Bye-bye, everybody.